Hey Rebels, my name is Matthew Barton. Welcome to the Rebellion Brewing Podcast. One of the things people notice when they come to our taproom is we don't just sell Rebellion beer. We have mead, cider, sodas, and other local companies providing us with great products. It's part of our commitment to supporting locally made goods that kick ass and sharing our excitement about them with you. We taste everything before we put it on the shelves, and we only put the stuff that we believe in in front of you. Today, Crystal Milburn joins us to sit down and talk about all things Prairie Bee Meadery. So let's get into it. Crystal, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you doing today? <laughs> Pretty good. We're out of that cold snap. Yay! <laughs> I walked my little guy to school today, and it was only minus 10. And I felt like I could have walked in shorts, as opposed to last week, where I was like sprinting to get back home because it was so cold. Yeah, it feels good to get out there and go, oh, it's cold. But it's not like cold. <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> First off, let me ask, who are you and what do you do at Prairie Bee Meadery? Okay, my name is Crystal. I'm with Prairie Bee, which is Saskatchewan's premier craft meadery. So we're located just 20 kilometers west of Moose Jaw, um, where we craft internationally award-winning meads from premium Saskatchewan honey. That's what we're up to. Um, I am one of the owners, so partly my business in partnership with my family. We are family run. And I am also the meat maker. That's what I do these days. Um, if, if I'm not at my desk, chances are I'm in the winery up to my elbows in honey. <laughs> Making a sticky mess. Making a sticky mess. <laughs> you talk about how you've won some awards. What is it about Saskatchewan honey that seems to be working for you? I think it all comes down to quality, right? Quality in, quality out. Same as garbage in, garbage out. So we use, it's really excellent honey. Um, we test our honey very stringently, mostly by taking giant spoonfuls of it and eating it. <laughs> um, Saskatchewan honey is some of the best honey in the world. Uh, it's clean. Uh, it's got a really beautiful flavor profile. Um, the bees are happy and they make great honey. So it works for us. If someone hasn't tried any Prairie Bee Meadery products, what would be your signature one they have to try first? I like people to try our traditional bee first. Um, especially if you're not familiar with mead, you don't know what to expect, you don't know what it is. There's a lot of misconceptions about mead, about what it is. Um, it's fermented honey, essentially. So then the next thing people think is, oh no, it's honey, it's super, super sweet. I don't want something really, really sweet, uh, but it doesn't have to be really sweet. That's not the point. I like people to start with our traditional because it really gives you a baseline for what we're doing at Prairie Bee. There are a thousand different ways to make mead. Most of our meads are very light bodied, uh, very crisp. Um, just a really enjoyable, easy to drink kind of little wine. And our traditional is a great place to start people off because it's not super, super sweet. It's not super, super dry. You get those beautiful honey flavors um, and that lovely, crisp little white wine experience. One of the things I try to explain to people when they're first dipping their toes into beer is there's a whole vast range of experiences to find and when it comes to mead I felt it was very much the same you can get something really dry and uh it's just like champagne kind of style like that it's just really mm, just mm. pops in your mouth or you can get something like really thick like what we used to do a mead a prairie yeah. cherry mead and it, it was like coat your tongue and it had a huge punch like there was no holding mm -hmm. back on the flavor there boom in your face yeah um we have to remember that mead like everything else like beer like wine is is a category and it's a really broad category 
So I do have people who say, well, why is it in wine bottles? I thought mead was a, a beer. Okay, <laughs> well, you can make something very beer-like using honey. You can add hops to it. You can ferment it. You can carbonate it. You can do all that stuff to it. But like any product, there's a vast array of ways that you can produce it and experiences that you can have with it. Um, so I've tried meads from all over the place. Uh, every time I travel, I buy bottles and I try them and it's all different. Everybody's doing something different out there. How hard is it to control the quality with uh, the output of your product? When it comes to beer, you've got the four ingredients, you know, water, hops, barley, yeast, and each of those inputs can have an effect. Mm -hmm. What is going on with mead? It's a lot of the same process. We have a lot of the same basic ingredients, water, honey, yeast. Um, our last ingredient is fruit. We do a lot of melomels, so a lot of fruit um, meads. And the problems that we face uh, kind of getting the quality product out are exactly the same as, as every other winery, every other brewery out there. You know, you have to make sure that your inputs are top quality, um, whether that's your fruit or your honey. Um, you have to make sure that you're using the right type of yeast, uh, that you're going to get the flavor profile that you want at the end. Um, and of course, you have to watch it very, very carefully while it's fermenting. Right. To ensure that nothing nasty in terms of flavor or aroma uh, creep in. And then there's a whole battery of testing. Right. We're testing for, for acids. We're testing for um, uh, volatile acidity. We're testing for alcohol and all of that stuff uh, to make sure that when it's in the bottle, it tastes as good as it should. <laughs> I know every time I've had the Prairie Bee Meadery uh, products, like I've, I've done tastings at the tap room with other staff and then I've done some with my wife. Uh, it's always very clean. It always seems to be very consistent, which I consider to be a mark of quality. It's not enough to do one great thing once. If you can do it multiple times and reproduce it, that shows an attention to detail and a care, you know? Yeah, it has to be repeatable. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, do you have like a fully committed person on the lab or is it just you kind of being obsessed about mead? It's just me right now. So we have um, our business actually started. My my parents started it um, making mead at home. Um, and then it was my mom's idea really to branch into doing it as, as a business, which is when I started learning. Um you know, whatever, five, six years ago, I guess now, when we first started getting into doing this as, as a business and commercially. Um, I have learned so much stuff. Um, I, I've learned how to run tests and check on everything um, every time something happens because it is, it is mostly me kind of in charge now. I have to, you know, figure out what's going wrong or what's going right, why something works, why it doesn't work. Um, and it takes, yeah, a lot of, um, I'm not sure what the right word is, to be honest. I don't know if the word is passion or anal retentiveness or um, fear. <laughs> <laughs> Like it costs a lot to make this stuff. I don't want it to go wrong. Uh, it right. might be a combination of all of the above. What's your favorite fruit right now? My favorite fruit, yeah, like like in a meat or just yeah. in general. You're talking about melomels. I, yes. I would say we've had a lot of success with cherries. I was curious, what are you like? I love strawberry. I love everything strawberry. It is. It's my favorite flavor. Um, strawberries with chocolate, strawberries with cream, strawberries just on their own, strawberries with champagne. Um, <laughs> and our, our strawberry meat, our strawberry splash is, is my personal favorite. I do love it. That's what I would say to people when I go into, say, a tap room or a brewery. Don't give me what your customers think is a favorite. Tell me what your favorite is. I want that. Yeah, that's, that's the one. And people will often ask me, what is your favorite? And then that's what they'll buy. So we saw a lot of strawberry. <laughs> and that's my favorite. 
I find uh, most often when people come into our tap room and ask me, oh, what do I like most? They, uh, I say, well, stouts are all time my favorite, but no one likes them. So I'm not going to force you. <laughs> you don't have to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> More often than not, they're, they're, they're at least polite about it. Yes. I, I sell my strawberry with the same sort of caveat. It's like my strawberry is my favorite, but it's sweet. If you don't like sweet wine, don't buy it. Um, I like the sweet stuff. So. See, and I, I, I think maybe it's because of beer, but I like a drier kind of mead, but you did have that offering. So when I tried it, I was like, okay, I, I like this because I've been burned a couple of times by uh, really fiery, hot, sweet mead. And I'm like, oh no. When it comes to pouring something out of the bottle into a glass and drinking it, I think it has to be easy to drink. It has to be, I'm ready to take my next sip now. Not, oh my God, I still have to finish this glass that I poured myself. Right? It should be easy to drink. So that's always my goal. And if what you like is a drier wine, if that's what you want, you don't want the, you know, that honey sweetness, that's fair. You know, we we provide that experience as well. We have our sour cherry as a dry wine. Our blueberry is another one. Um, you know, really nice, beautiful finishes, fantastic, like with food sitting at the table. Um, I like both of those ones too. I also uh, was seeing that you've launched a new line of products. Yeah, uh, just brought them into the tap room. Do you mind telling me a little bit about it? You bet. So what we have done, um, I don't know if everybody is aware. Maybe they are. There's a huge growth in the industry right now in the seltzer end. What's being called refreshment beverages, right? Ciders, seltzers, um, wine coolers, that type of thing. And we've wanted to do something like that for a long time. So finally we, we bit the bullet and we said, okay, it's time. Uh, so we have just launched our brand new sessional need. So it is a, a lower alcohol, it's 4%. It is carbonated, it comes in a four pack in a can. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I'm so happy with the way it has turned out. Um, and it is meant to be just that, a refreshing beverage, something you can just grab out of your fridge uh, and enjoy quick, you know, single serving, take it to the lake, go out fishing, picnics, barbecues, whatever. Um, and it's beautiful. I've We had to do a lot of research. We went out, we bought a lot of different products that are available kind of in that category. We tasted a lot of stuff. We drank a lot. Well, we tasted a lot of it. Um, I didn't finish a lot of it, to be honest. Um, and I said, okay, I know we can do better than this. How many versions of a recipe did you go through before you kind of found out which one you, you reached your standards? Uh, I think, I think I did sort of four or five. I had kind of a baseline idea of, of what it should be and where we should start. Um, so when I started running bench trials, yeah, I think I did about four or five trials um, before I said, yeah, no, this is, this is the one, this is where it's, where it's going to be. Um, and then from there, scale it up. So what we're doing is we're using all natural flavors. Um, and they're, I mean, they're just gorgeous. <laughs> I know my wife is a huge fan of seltzers. I, I can't, I can't get into it, but I'm not going to discriminate. <laughs> uh, to me, it's like drinking a little bit of a static cling kind of thing, but sure, she's yeah. like, Oh my God, I can't get enough of this. And I, I, I told her, I'm like, Hey, we're bringing in some Prairie B metery seltzers. And she goes, really? You're going to have to bring some home. <laughs> <laughs> and did you? It wasn't a hard sell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did bring some home <laughs> and she dug it. Yeah. I'm really enjoying them. Um, we've only got three flavors right now. We've got a Saskatoon, uh, raspberry lemon and our mead mosa, which is like an orange, but we do have one more coming up. It's supposed to be getting canned. Well, I want to say next week might be the week after, which is our mead coladas, right? Pineapple and coconut. I think we all need some summer feeling flavors right now. 
Are you using actual coconut, like toasted coconut or something for the? No, we're part? using it. Uh, we're using a, a coconut cream. What? So tell me what a coconut cream is. What does that mean? It's well, it's it's think of it as like a coconut extract. Okay. Right. So like distilled coconut. <laughs> Because when we've put coconut additions mm-hmm. into the beer, we have to be very cognizant of how we handled it, when we put it in, all that stuff. Because it has to be shelf stable. Yes. And coconut, it can be like a bit of a, it's a wildcat, you know? Yeah, which is why we're we're using um, an, an aseptic, you know, manufactured natural sort of bottle of coconut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other thing question I had was I was looking at the Saskatoon cans. I didn't drink it myself. I had the uh, other one, the Mead Mosa. Oh yeah. And I was wondering like Saskatoons are a fairly dry kind of berry. Uh, hot They're kind of horrible berry. to work with. Yeah. How as do you a, balance that? As a fruit, as an actual fruit, they are horrible to work with. They're super dry. There's no juice in them. Um, yeah, they're they're really really hard to work with. Uh, so we did a Saskatoon mead, like a, like in a bottle, our our wine mead, that um, and we tried and tried and tried to do it. And every time we made one, it was brown, it was ugly, it was really unappealing. Um, so in the end, we said this isn't working. Let's do something else. So we ended up taking our Saskatoon and blending it with Haskett berries. And for that wine, that worked really really well. When I'm doing my Saskatoon in the can, and I'm, I'm like, I don't want to mess around with Saskatoons. They're awful. Um, so, I mean, I've done this. I've done the same thing. Uh, we've got, you know, Saskatoon natural condensed concentrated flavors and extracts that we're using instead. So somebody else has to mess around with the horrible berries uh, because they are terrible. They are terrible to work with. I've got, you know, 900 pounds of Saskatoons in my freezer right now to be pressed and I'm just not looking forward to it. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but people get really precious about Saskatoon (laughs) berries and they don't realize, I think they just like the sugar their grandma added to the pie. Right. They're great for pies, you know, or jams. You know, you put them in a pot, you heat them up, throw a ton of sugar in it. Fantastic. Um, try to press them for juice and it's like it's the worst it is absolutely the worst (laughs) so they're a pain in the ass to deal with but you figured it out and you turned it into a seltzer yeah yeah absolutely how (laughs) you talk to people smarter than you I mean, um, that's what I do for a living. I'm constantly you know, asking people. You 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 shop around and you look and you and you talk to to the people out there who are who are doing stuff, um, and say this is what I want. You know, can you help? Do you know somebody who can help? Let's solve a problem together. So it's, you know, that's kind of what it comes down to is go out into the world and find the people who know better than you do. Where can people find? the uh, seltzers and the Prairie Bee Meadery products besides the tap room? Well, if you're out and about, I have to be honest, they are so new. There aren't many stores that are carrying them right now. So we have it at our store in Moose Jaw, right? Our, our Moose Jaw Sobeys um, has been really great, a huge supporter of us. So they knew it was coming. They ordered right away. There are a couple of Sobeys locations uh, that are carrying it already. You're not going to find it at any of the SLGA stores yet. Um, I don't know if you... Through that red tape? Well, no. So we did all our product listing stuff that we have to do with SLGA to get it into the stores. But then um, I don't know if you're aware, the SLGA was had their system hacked on the holiday over the holidays. So a bunch of stuff got lost and not done. So um, the SLGA stores can't order it yet because it doesn't exist in their system yet. We're working on it. We're trying to get that sorted out so that we can deliver it and uh, get it out there. Um, Come summertime, we hope to have it all over the province, right? When you're really, really itching for something cold, um, get out there and find it. But for now, if you want it, your best bet is to go to your liquor store and say, you guys don't have this yet. You need to bring it in. 
and tell them I, to make room on their shelves. <laughs> I will say this. I have had the pleasure and the experience of dealing with the Moose Jaw Sobeys folks, and they're so easy to deal with. They are fantastic. They've, they've really been great to work with uh, ever since that store opened up. Um, they've yeah. just been really, really good for us. So you, you walk in there and the staff is like excited to talk to you about beer and product. Yeah. And they, they seem to be fairly knowledgeable. And just when I was, I was literally hand bombing flats of beer into the back of the store and the dude's helping me. He's not just standing there with his hand on his hip you know, waiting, yeah, waiting for, for you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, I didn't have to hump the kegs and all that stuff into the store. He was, he was like, let's get it. Let's get her done, buddy. You know, he's right in there with me. And I was just like, thanks. You're making my life easy today. No, they have been great to deal with. I'm, I'm very happy with them. They're awesome. Big 2022 vision plan. What is yours? Oh, big 2022 vision plan. I would love to see tourists back out again. Um, I don't know if we can plan for that, but that's the hope. Uh, haven't quite finished writing up my my yearly goals yet or our, our, our mission for the year. We did a lot of new stuff over the last couple of years. We've tried a lot of new things. We've done new products. We've done expansions. Um, so 2022 is all about kind of settling in, finding the groove before we take on anything else new. Uh, that's the goal. Generally, it's grow sales, grow the brand and get tourists back out. You know, we've been getting a lot of really positive feedback about your products. Uh, when people come in and maybe, maybe somebody says, I'm not a beer person, but my friends are, I just want to have something lighter or they're, they're willing to try something new. And we often say, Hey, try, try a splash of this. And the reception is, is great. So I think it speaks volumes that, our fans are willing to spread their wings a little and stretch and try your stuff. And they're all pleasantly surprised. And we're kind of <laughs> like, I told you so. Yeah, look, it's good. It's neat and it's good. <laughs> Crystal, I want to thank you for your time today. Oh, it's uh, my absolutely my pleasure. I'm so happy to have been able to join you today. Stay warm, stay uh, healthy. Hopefully you could dodge any nonsense for the next couple of weeks as long as we can uh, at some point get my car out of the snow drift that it's stuck in right now um i expect everything to you know be uphill from there <laughs> or downhill or whatever the goodwood direction is <laughs> all right rebels Thanks for listening today. If you have any questions or comments about this episode, be sure to join us on our brand new Facebook group page, The Rebellion Brewing Podcast. I'm going to include links in the show notes to all things Prairie Bee Meadery so you can find them online. I'm also proud to let you know we're members of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. It's a one-stop shop for tons of locally produced shows from across our province. You can find them at saspodcastnetwork.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped so you don't miss out on the latest in Sass Craft Beer News. Thank you for joining the Rebellion.